I'm going to start out with roughing gouge. And uh, cut, cut down this neck. And here. Anybody else got any questions before I start? I did put some thin CA glue on those knots and let it soak down in there. This didn't vibrate this much on the paramatic. the large part and the small part to be thirds. So there's a third over here, two thirds here, and then the reverse. As you can see, there's still some moisture in that. And these uh, knots will chip out pretty bad. They're kind of hard. Also on the Norfolk Island Pine, the pith in the center is like sponge. It's really soft. So you don't have any problem finding, finding the pith. Just the sliding across the chart so I can get a nice clean cut there. And that right there is a lot smoother than this was. So I'm going to go back and cut that. cleaner cut. I've got a little bit of chip out on that one, but I'm going to return the outside after I hollow it out, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here, but I want to establish what my shape is. And as you can see, I'm, I'm not cutting down to the bottom edge. I've cutting up on the side where the sharp is at an angle and the wood is sliding across the sharp. This is the same way you use the skew to get a nice clean cut. Once this is rounded off some more, you've got to look at this curve here that is, it's going to go all the way through the bottom 
So I probably need to add a little bit more curve to that, but I'll do that after I do the hollowing. If you notice, we got two back operation guys up here. Pardon? <laughs> the two back operation guys up here. Just have to call an ambulance if they yeah, fly up. Yeah. We got one standing by. All right, this is the brand new Carter hollow roller, they call it. And I used it on my power mattock, and that shaft there was three quarters of an inch too short, so I had to substitute a, um, another bar that I had for my. Uh, My McNaughty. I did find uh, a couple of things about this I don't like. One of them is this: is when there's no friction on the nut, it's kind of hard to pull this up and reposition that handle. Got three different size Allen wrenches to deal with. And also, they've got a set screw right here that's right in the way of the roller. Does everybody see that? So, can't tighten it up. The, uh, this fits through here real nice and we're, I'm turning this around because you're mainly going to be wanting this handle over here to get around the bowl. This came with it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, looks like about where I want it. Now, could be. Sounds like it. All right. What? Oh, so. That comes with it. They call this a scraper. <clears throat> I'd really call it a cutter, and it's got this washer to hold it on there. Did you put it under the camera, Jeff? Uh, overhead camera? Yes. Go overhead. Yeah, there's got it. There yeah, you go. Yes, sir. And uh, so. It also came in the box with this hunter cutter, which is uh, an extra. That's a solid carbide. And when I tried putting it on there with this, because there was so much space there, the washer cock crooked, bound up the screw, and as tight as I could get it, it wasn't tight enough as soon as I started cutting it started moving. So I made this piece out of brass and And so once I did this, I solved the problem. You file for your patent on that? No. I got one patent to my name, it's expired because now you got to pay an upkeep on a patent. But I had a product that I couldn't get anybody interested in selling it unless 
they could sell it for the cheapest price I was able to get it manufactured for. So it never got on the market, and I'm not even going to tell you how many, many thousands of dollars we spent. They send you that thing for you to test, or? Well, last I... Saturday it was here. What's the deal on this? It's been donated to the club. That's what I thought, but I didn't want to say that. It's been donated to the club, and I was asked to evaluate it. Okay? I think David said they're going back to Carter with the record or with the evaluation. Yeah, well, I've got um, um, a write up I'm working on, and uh, material out of there. Yeah, I need to get the two rest farther back. Ah, I see what the problem is. When you say back, which direction do you Well, I pulled this back and then it ended up in that part right there. So I've got it too close to the wood. Oh, no, no. I got a web on the bed there keeping it from going right where I want it. sell a laser for this and I think it really needs it to when I did that when I ended up taking this off and putting mine on which does have a laser so I could get the wall here where I can look and I can see the inside and the outside so I can judge my wall. Alright, who wants to come and use this? Anybody want to give it a try? Come. been a segmented turner never a chunk wood turner <laughs> I, I'm uh, I'm gonna need some, this is real strange to me okay so. but All I right. saw you holding it up here I've, I've also got my hand on the tool rest so you need one hand here to move this and one hand here on the tool rest and you can 
you actually do most everything with there. You're just kind of mm -hmm. steadying it up here. You know, when you go to get down inside, you can move that way over there. But you really can do pretty much right here everything with this. Just uh -huh. taxi before you. Oh yeah. Full power. Do what? Throttle. Oh. Taxi before you. All right. That hunter cutter is really a great cutter, as you can see. That's really bringing the material out. And uh, I really like them. I've got some other tools with that little cut cutter on it. Give me some rotation here. We'll we'll, uh, we'll, we'll pull back on the elevator. I'm assuming you can go both ways. Yeah, but you don't want to get too deep because you'll get caught. Move. Uh, move. Move that way. Put your other hand here and, and get over there closer. Not <laughs> move your whole body that way. Okay. And get this, right down here. Put this hand here. Okay. Okay. And now put that one. Kind of hold the tool rest here with this hand. So you're you're you're. you're We're both left hand. Okay. Anybody else? You you're not really moving it very much as you cut. And I find it best if I've got my hand resting on here and now I'm push and pull with my fingers and get better control of this than my hand back here. Because now I've, I've got my hand against that tool rest and it gives me something to leverage against. Somebody else? Ron? I actually use it. Oh yeah? Okay. <clears throat> I'm biased. I sell it. competitor's model. So well, I've got Jimmy? a couple of them that I made, and there's really not much difference in the principle of the operation. It's more about the cutter and you cut your hand. Huh? It looks like you cut your hand. Oh, well, I do that all, shit all the time. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, now this cutter is off to the side, so without this captured in here in this flat bar, the cutter would want to tip. And when it does that, it digs in. Because you want to set it up so you're just slightly above center. And if it tips in, tips on you, it digs in. But the bottom of the bar is flat, so... The bottom of the bar is flat, so it's rolling on this roller, and, that, and the top one's pinching it in there, so... That means that the handle can't twist, Jack? Yeah, the handle can't twist, see? Okay. Come on, we can try it. Now the shavings are, this wood is wet, the shavings are wet, and they, they just want to kind of stick in there. And I've got to keep clearing those out of the way so I can see what I'm doing because I don't want to go through the neck right there. And if I go any deeper, I will, but I've got a little ridge right inside of there I want to get off. I really seem to have more control when I'm pulling this way than pushing because of the angle of the tool, it's angled, so when I push it wants to go in, when I pull back it wants to come out of the cut. So I've got better control that way.
one thing about drilling the hole to start with is you can drill it to the depth that you want so that that eliminates a little bit of guessing well how deep am I because you just go to the bottom of the hole and then you just you want to leave enough room there to clean off the bottom edge so you don't see the point from the drill and stuff doesn't blow out that way. Anybody else have a hollowing tool for deep hollowing? Nobody? Uh, this, this is a nice one for a small lathe, but if for the jet or the mini jet, you you got to have a, a bed extension on it to be able to use it. You, you don't have enough room otherwise. And so most, most all your cutting you were doing on a pool cut to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And normally when I'm working at home, I've got a light here shining in there so I can see what I'm doing. Um, as far as no, I know. depth, I can stick that in there, eyeball across, mark it with my thumb, come up here, I'm that deep right there. So I need to go deeper. You can offset the tool over here more. Uh, there are times when you need it if if you've got a rim like this and you want to get back under it, you'll, you'll need a gooseneck. And they don't have one for this, but Jack, if you have a hollowing tool, then you need that blue portion. You need actually two two rests is that right? You need the one right in front. You need that blue portion also. Yeah. Yeah, you need the two two rests. Turk Allison's calling me. I don't know what he wants, but we can wait. Do you use any of that tool on this? Yes. I, I did, but then I went and put mine on there because I've got a laser on mine, which I don't have a laser on this. And, uh, and the advantage of the laser, you've got a bar coming up and over in the laser here pointing down. And you set the laser away from your cutter the thickness of the wall that you want. So then when the laser goes past and over the edge of your bowl or vase, you know you've got that thickness that you want. Until, until you get that thickness, it's riding you know, up here someplace, and when it gets right there where it goes past it, then you know you're at that thickness that you set here. Is the internal surface of this typical of that kind of tool? Yeah, I use the laser to get a uniform thickness. No, I said the surface, the roughness. Uh, well, after I uh, use this, I use a, a scraper to uh, change, change cutters. Yeah. Is 
wet as it is, you could never get a smooth finish inside, could you? Well, that's why you have to let it dry and sand it. All right, uh, to get down to the bottom, I've got to adjust my height because I'm a little bit too high. So Jack, how does that feel in controlling it compared to your uh, Jameson when it comes to deep Uh Yeah, I've got a D-handle that I made. Uh, how, did, how does that one compare and feel? Okay. Um, this works fine. It, it works real smooth. It's it's a well-made piece of equipment. Uh, like I said the one thing was that cutter. I had to make this holder for this cutter, and uh, yeah, it, it does a nice job. And it's and that's loose. What would somebody do if they bought that? They couldn't make that part that you made. They'd be up a trick, huh? Well. <coughs> The cutter that comes with it, you don't need that. Yeah, but I'm saying, so what happens to the guy that buys that for 300 bucks? He, just, he can't make that part that you were fortunate enough to be able well, to make. Well, that's why I'm doing a write-up on it, and I'm going to have to uh, recommend to them. Get, get with the piece tree on that and make a suggestion to the company. All right, I'm going to go down and try and get some of this on the center now. And I'm still above center. Uh, I always have magnets on my lathe, so I can set this on the magnet and not use it. that I see on the market are really for a bigger lathe. And so if you have a small lathe, this is a, a good unit for that. Jack, how does that laser work you talking about? Well, the laser's up here and it's shining a, okay. a down and you set, offset the laser from your cutter the thickness of your wall. So it's about like that caliper there. It's it set a distance. Yeah. All right, now you can see the cutter there. Uh-huh. And I'd set the laser up so it would be shining right here. Okay. So now that's the thickness of my wall. And so the laser, when you're in the center, the laser is going to be dancing around up here someplace, but when you get to your wall thickness, all of a sudden it goes off the side. And you know not to go any farther. <laughs> we'll see if I can pull some light on you. Probably not with that. No, I think. You see my lights up there that I donated? Yeah. Bring one of those up here and get it plugged in. <laughs> Any kind of plug. <laughs> another course. Yeah, how thick you leave the wall? I'm about a quarter inch here. Gonna have to get another extension. <laughs> Well, there's an outlet right there. Yeah, you, you 
yeah. to the handle. Right now, but it's, it's connected to the handle. It's rigidly connected to the handle. There, now you see. <laughs> So when that when that laser comes through the body, you know your tool is that is that far away from the outside. So that that distance between the tool and the laser is your the thickness of your wall. You got not control that This right here is one of my favorite Halloween tools. It's called a hook tool, and it it doesn't uh, jam up, and you can do a really nice job with that. And I think I need to take this setup off, put this tool rest up here, so I can get in there and handle that bottom. So the hook tool is entirely hand controlled, right? There's no this? No, the hook tool you're gonna use. There's there's no guide rollers for it. There's no No. Would the suggestion be, Jack, that they could if they could uh, make uh, interchangeable heads on this that uh, like some of the Halloween tools you can use your own uh, ends. Well, you can change the ends on that, so, yeah. That support needs to be three work too. Pardon? I said that little support needs to be redesigned, too. Yeah. All right. how you use this one. Is that camera looking inside? who's from Canada, but he's got a guy down in Florida that actually cast the, their cast tool steel. Alright. So now my thickness I've got is right there. I want to take more off of that and my depth, I'm, I need to go down almost an inch. Yeah, I got a question. I know it's still got more hollowing to do, but are you going to, uh, after you get your hollowing done, are you going to take and reverse that? in some manner onto a different chuck to, to do the bottom. I'm going to demonstrate that, yeah. yeah. Okay, I want to get this tool rest as close, close as I can get to the bottom. So I'm going to run it inside like this. And now I can get down there on the bottom a little bit better. Oh, can you lower that camera? Can you lower it down so we can see what you're doing? 
not too much trouble. Whose bowl is this? It's mine. It's not supposed to be going around the main one. Remember the pith is right on the center and the pith is real soft so that tool will just go right on in there if you don't watch out. right there. Could go a little bit deeper, but I think I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I'll just make it. Alright, now I'm going to go back to the hunter tool. The Halloween tool. And get rid of that wall thickness. The jack, there's a bowl going around here, looks like it's got eight or nine radials, so it's not necessarily five. As far as I've ever known, it's always five. Always five, so that might have been well, two, it may not two be, of them close together. That may be a different kind of pine, because other pines do the same thing. It's in North Carolina pine. Okay. Yeah. It might not have much distance between the, the sets of radials. Well, look around the room. All of us look different, too. Yeah, yeah. But we all got two arms. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, Norfolk Island is an island off the west coast of Australia. <laughs> Not related to Norfolk, Virginia. No. Then we don't have to call it Norfolk. Depends on where you that's it, where you grew up. Jack, on this uh, base that's going around, what did you do to, on the uh, knots to seal them? Did you put uh, CA or anything on Yeah. Epoxy? What? I put thin CA. That was uh, one of Frank Johansson's hints, is that uh, as you go along, just keep up. Uh, I remember him. Is that the one you got the He was at, he was just at uh Unicoi this year. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, he demonstrated up at Atlanta Wood Turn Guild for uh -huh. three years ago. So you mean as you go, as you as you take out more material you you I uh, Jack might answer that better than me. I I've not really turned any, so <clears throat> you talking about the C A glue? Yeah. Uh When I get real close to my final cut, I put the thin CA glue on there, let it set up, and then I make one last cut. Unless I've messed up and got a big chunk out and I decide I need to take some more off of it like I did that when I several several of the knots just fracture off and it left a deep hole, so I kept making real slight cuts so I got what I wanted. And you're doing it on the inside too? Yeah. The CA. Yeah. Alright, now I'm set back up to go back and hollow down here on the bottom. And any question before I get started? What did you put on the end right now? What kind of a cutter did you just put on the end? I haven't changed the cutter. I've took up the hunter. Okay cutter on there, which is the carbide cutter. And it's still sticking out to the side? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
I was at so at Walmart the other night and I found some LED lights just about this size, only they're LEDs and they have them in the uh, the bargain thing for seven bucks. So I bought every one they had with the screw base, but they still had some with the the base like on a the old fluorescent starter for seven bucks. That was uh, Lawrenceville Walmart. <laughs> These are halogens and they do get hot and they also are real subject to vibration waking them out and they're not cheap. And the LED one's bright enough to do what I want to do down in here and I can get it a lot, it's a little bit smaller diameter so I can get it a lot closer. But you're gonna be seeing more of that stuff on the market. Is that spalting or is that the limb shape I, we're seeing there? I don't know. Uh, down at the bottom, that's spalting because the, the limbs, you, you can't see the limbs from the camera because the limbs are right in this area. I'm talking about the reverse angle of the way it grew. Right, right in here is where the limbs are. Yeah, but we can see one. Yeah. Okay, right now I'm... Um, I'm going to take a little bit more off there, not a whole lot. So, I'll get a little bit more out of there and then we'll re <coughs> remount this and work on the outside. Now see what I'm doing, I'm looking over on this side, I can't really see the cutter. thing about doing this hollow is stopping and clearing the chips out all the time. Of course having an air hose here with a long stem on it makes it a whole lot easier. How long for that to dry before you sand in there? Yeah. Well it, the thinner you get it the faster it's going to dry and uh, it dries pretty quick. If you make it that thin you, you obviously don't plan to chuck it up and turn it around again. Pardon? If you're cutting it that thin now, you obviously do not intend to chuck it up and turn it round again. If it well, it pretty much stays round because you're centric with the rings. Okay. So it doesn't move much. Right. It, the whole thing decreases in size, but it should but stay. It pretty much stays round. Yeah. The cracking is not an issue. Either. Well, not that I found in the Norfolk Island pine. Okay. Um, I can go a little bit thinner there. Um, when, you, when you start sanding, you're really not going to uh, this is one of my problems on um, me go just a little bit higher. You pretty much want that bar level, Jack? Yeah, you want the bar level, but what's happening here is the wood's hitting on the bottom edge of the mm -hmm. the holder for the yeah. cutting bit, 
and so that was rubbing on the wood which if you can get it just right that <coughs> gives you some some control but you can get help or hindrance depending on where you're at Anybody got any questions? Speak out. What do you use to say it inside like that? I made some drum standers. I took a length of quarter inch rod. I put a piece of broom handle on it and turned that through. Then I put some pipe insulation, foam pipe insulation, put that around that. And I glued it all together with the 3M weather stripping adhesive that you get at Auto Parts Place. And then I put Velcro on the outside of the foam. And I've got several of those, several different lengths of about this long a rod. And the rod's polished so you can hold the drill right here and put, put your hand around the rod and you can go in there and you can work it any way you want. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I bought uh, sandpaper from Clingspore. They're roll ends. It, you know, it's got just a section of paper with no grid on it and it's got about that much of the Velcro loop loose on it. And you trim that off and cut it whatever length you want it and wrap it around that and they have it in their they advertised in their catalog they've got their roll ends of I think PSA and cloth back but if you ask them they also have a bargain box with the hook and loop And I bought a couple of those and I've got lots of it and I'm still using it. Okay, I'm down to quarter inch wall there. A little bit thicker there, about a half inch, so let's take a little bit more off. It doesn't take much shaving. I can't see what I'm doing anymore. At some point I'm just going by feel. And you really have to shut it off to get the shavings out of there because centrifugal force they'll just stick to the edge even if you stick a, a air hose in there while it's running it just doesn't want to blow it out. All right, now I've got what I want there on the front side. And on the back side, I've got quite a bit to take off, but I'm going to turn this in some. And it's it's a uh, nice loop in there, and it feels pretty good. So I think I'm going to leave that and before you tear that down can you come up with a close look at yeah yeah come on i'll take a break here for take a, a break incidentally i brought in a, a, a scraper on here and the way i sharpen this is i loosen it up with the set screw so it's just a little bit loose and it's spin on there and then I hold it on the grinder at about a 45 degree angle and the grinder spins it and grinds it at the same time. Mm -hmm. carbon. Uh, no it's not carbide. And so what I'm going to do is attempt to do a little clean up here and I'm going to use this tool so it's at an angle. I 
of course, I want to go downhill. <laughs> Hold that sign. Yeah, you're not doing anything. <laughs> I had the tool rest right to the point that it was hitting right here where this bump is. You'll see where it's going to be here. The other side. Cleaned it up a whole lot smoother. I suspect that white will get get much darker over over ten years or fifteen years. I I have no idea. I don't think I've seen any real old most of the time. Okay, hey, you want to pass that around real quick? That's Nova. Nova. All mine are Nova. That way the jaws are all interchangeable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, big marks look, I think, a little bit better. But <coughs> how do you compare big mark in one way? They're both overpriced. <laughs> <laughs> I think Technic Tool's got the best buck, the best bang for the buck. Hmm? I think the Technic Tool's got the best bang for the buck. Oh, that's, that's a Nova. Technical, yeah, that's yeah, Nova. It's, 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 there's, there's better one, but that's <clears> probably <throat> as good as you're going to get for a dollar. This one's not as heavy as my yeah. power mat. I made this cone. I saw one made out of aluminum over at uh, Don Russell's house, and I said, I can make one of that. I've got a whole lot of 5 8 bolted birch plywood, so I cut some circles and stacked them all up and drilled it and threaded it for a three-quarter inch, and that screws on there, and of course I can turn it either way. And so now I can put that between center when it comes back up here. Hurry up, pass it up, pass it up. Oh, Quick look. Yep. Yep. <laughs> all the quick look. Good man. My pith is right there in the center and that's right on the center and it it's soft. And you will see it just just pushes right in there. There's it's like sponge. Jack, I didn't see it. Can you take it back off and send it back? <laughs> Come on up here and get a closer look so I can hit you over the head. <laughs> Don't keep that from tearing out if it's so soft. Well, guess what? That's not center. That was your one shot, too, right? <laughs> okay. So. Could you stabilize that with CA glue? Yeah. It's a sixteenth inch off. Looks 
Yeah, that's true. That's a fat 16. Yeah, there's no center. Yeah, well, they hammer? Yeah, they hammer. Yeah, they hammer. Yeah, they hammer. Yeah, I got a hammer up here. Now I got a different high point. Obviously, I'm not hitting it hard enough, seeing how I'm still the same point. Move some in. All those things. A lot closer than what it was. But I still didn't go far enough. Cool. You've done this too, huh? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good enough. Good enough for who it's for. Size, so I won't be able to reach up it. Now, Jack, how do you know where, where your bottom is on the inside? <laughs> FM. PM, pure. Something magic. <laughs> <laughs> I watch very carefully how much I take off, and I, I know how much I had there. You didn't hear me ask you about PTA earlier. Stop the lathe, move you to the rest. But once your piece is perfectly round, you can get away with it. Until it's perfectly round. I'm taking this cut right down to my... So I, now I know exactly where center is. And now I'm going to 
put a tenon Say this is a skew, right? Everybody agree with me? This is a skew if you use it right. Can you see where I'm cutting? I'm cutting up on the side of it so that the wood is sliding across the sharp, and I can even roll it around and do the same thing. If one area gets dull, I can just roll it to a sharp red. But I'm cutting where the where the wood is sliding across the sharp and the sharp at about a 45 degree angle. Hill, right? So now I gotta move over and come down. take this off here and put it back on I want it in the same place so I'm gonna put a little mark right there and a little mark right there so I can line those back up and I'm still a little lumpy right there Jack why are you changing the shape pardon why are you changing the shape right now changing the shape yeah why are you cleaning up because I'm finished with it all, other than letting it dry and sand it. You just took 16th of an inch off. Why? Because I needed to take that much off to get it running true. Okay. I didn't want to cut some on one side and not the other side. And, you, and you're comfortable with the wall thickness since you can't see what you're doing, right? Yeah, I'm going to pass this around just a minute. I'm almost finished. I bored you guys long enough. Hmm? What's the placard button? Uh, I wouldn't say this was the boring you can get, but I think it's pretty interesting. Well, I didn't pr prior run this demonstration and time it or anything, so I think I did pretty good. Which do you trust more, your eye or your hand, as far as shape is? Yeah. yeah. The overall shape, my eye, bumps and, and, and fine tuning would be my hand. <clears throat> what do you think? Very good. Very good. Very good. And once that's dry, it'll be about half the way to this right now. Because it turned on the pith, it's symmetrical, it's not going to move very much. It'll shrink in size, diameter a little bit, but it should stay pretty old, uh, pretty round. When are you going to see it? Pardon? When are you going to see it? When it's darn good and dry? Yeah. 
Will you try and throw it again or not? <laughs> Will I try and turn it again? Yeah. No. It, you want you want to throw it? No, it's as true as it's going to be. Uh -huh. And it just needs to really dry a whole lot. Now, what about the knots right now? Is that you? You're done with the CA on the knots? No, I'll put some on when I get home. Okay. How long will it take to dry it, or would you want to put it in linseed oil or anything like that? No, I don't want to use linseed oil because that would make it dark and amber. I'd rather keep the lighter color. This piece over here.